Welcome back to Minecraft, um, and I have with me, uh, as per usual, I have Malinka. Hello, Malinka. Hello. And on my other side, I have Demon Reaper. Hello, Demon Reaper. Hello. Hello. So, um, this episode, we're going to have two things going on at once, but because one of them you've kind of seen quite a few times, um, we're going to be letting Malinka go on his own and we can catch up with him later in the episode but in the background you'll see Malinka running around a lot and you're going to be setting up what Malinka? I'm going to be setting up thermal expansion. I've been a bad boy. I'm not allowed to be prime time today. <laughs> something like that. But Demon and, uh, <laughs> and myself we're going to do something that has a few new things that have been added in this version of Minecraft so let's get started with factorization. Um, Demon. I'm sure you can lead the way. You've got loads of stuff in this chest. What do you want to make first? Oh, yes. First, we'll probably be making... Uh, let me look at it. <laughs> I have notes. Uh, Kaleometric burner. Okay. So, uh, here's the recipe for the Kaleometric burner, which is coming up on my screen now. So, we've got some gunpowder, some water bottles... Oh, yeah, I assume you're going to do it with sulfur, considering I saw sulfur in the chest. Yes. Cool. Um, we can use this uh, left-hand crafting table when you've picked up your stuff. I believe I've got everything for it. Excellent. Cool. One and two. Fantastic. Oh, you're planning on making two calimetric burners. You did some testing of this, didn't you, previously? Yes, I found out that two is better than one. <laughs> it allows the... It allows the... Um, steam boiler to make... Or the water boiler to make uh, more steam so that we can power the battery and keep it running constantly. Excellent, cool. I was going to say, two is always better than one. That's just... <laughs> More is always better. That's right. So, speaking of what's next, we're moving on to the water boiler. Okay. Uh, we'll explain what each of these do uh, when we place them down, I, am, I guess. So let's just get the crafting part done. So for that we need seven iron ingots. And an iron bar. Nice. Next up would be the steam turbine. This is a little bit more difficult. Uh, there's a lot of steam turbines two lead. on my screen. Ah, oh, this one. Yep, two lead, a motor, and a fan, which is where it gets more complicated. Some iron, iron bars, and glass panes. Um, which parts are you going to make that first? The, the fan looks fairly easy. But the motor... Probably the fan. Much. Yeah. Okay. Let's start off with the fan. Nice easy X shape. And then the motor. Well, the motor is where it gets, starts getting tricky because you're going to need some insulated coil which is uh, goes around a clay block. Uh, did you have clay blocks? Yeah, you did. Cool. I do. And I know you're going to need some sulfur, so what I'm going to do is, while you're gathering that, I'm going to help you out and make another s bottle of sulf uh, sulfuric acid. Thank you. Which I can just throw at you. It's just on the floor behind you. Uh, if you just start with the uh, the insulated coil, 
So I believe you can need four of those, which you get four of just by using uh, one lot of clay, actually. But I'll be needing more for later. Oh, okay. Cool. Fantastic. So, so I'll make them on now. Yep, that's 16 altogether. And then we need a magnet. So with a magnet, the probably best bet is to jump straight over to the battery block, which is um, in a cross shape, would be a lead ingots, but with sulfuric acid in the middle and in the corners, iron ingots. Got to grab some more iron. Okay. So then the sulfuric acid in the middle and the four iron on the outside. That gives us our battery. Now the battery actually starts off at full power and fully charged, uh, which is very useful. Unfortunately, we only get two batteries out of this and we'll need three. Um, okay. And I think if you add some lead wire top and bottom, you'll get um, some of your magnetized stuff. So, yeah, three lead in a row gives you um, a whole bunch of lead wire. And then I think battery in the middle and... Oh, yeah, there's... Oh, yeah, that gives you a magnet. Nice. And good thing we don't use our battery. Okay. And oddly enough, we don't use our lead either. No, nope, you get all of that back, which means you can then use that battery again to recharge and use in the build itself. So I don't know if you end up needing three lead batteries altogether in the end, considering they're not consumed. I will need batteries, but not to the battery block. Or the magnets, rather. Cool. The steam turbine is probably the the hardest part to make. Um, don't forget you can shift click recipes in if you've got all the stuff. Um, you got your glass panes. For the motor. Oh, not for the motor. Yeah, sorry, I'm a, I'm actually a step ahead of you by a mistake. Yeah, cool. Yeah, but it is okay. <laughs> Just making my two motors now. And I was a derp and used up on my iron. That's okay. We've got loads of iron. There's even more iron in here if you need it. And there's my steam turbine. Sweet. Now, time to get some charge. Okay, so this is factorization's version of power build up, and uh, we'll be doing some processing with factorization in a short while, but for now, let's get the uh, power going. So these are calumetric burners. They'll be making good use of those in just a moment but those also need to be hooked up to some power um, what I'm doing here is making an infinite water source because the steam boiler has to sit next to the calumetric burners or the water boiler rather uh, one can do for and later. to do that it has to sit I'm, I'm, I'm just adding the leaves on top because I think we'll need those later right to turn them off yes we will yeah. so I'll go grab some water because I failed to remember that uh, can you place the ones that are in your cans that you had ready yet and uh, I do not believe you can okay you may try though uh, no sorry uh, I believe in our missed chest there should be a bunch of buckets Uh, I've got it, and 
I know where there's water. There's loads over here. It's one, two, and that should all be two buckets should all we need. I'm going to remove this calumetric burner so that it makes it a little easier for you to place. Oh, okay. Thanks. So one will go there, one will go there, and infinite water source in the middle of the two. So the steam boiler... And there's our water boiler. Yeah, it actually requires that water underneath, and what it's planning on doing is boiling the water. However, it needs a way of heating up. And these calumetric burners are what we're using to warm up the boiler. And calumetric is basically works on calories. Calories being food. So here, have some food. And um, I'll fill up the left-hand one, you fill up the right-hand one, and we'll just dump potatoes in them. Like so. And Looks good to me. Normally... Uh, it's a shame we probably should have had a charge thing so we could watch this in action, but uh, yeah, it's actually now building up uh, charge and this should be spinning up and creating uh, steam of some kind, which or just general power. Right. It's fairly easy to make if you want me to make one real quick. Uh, yeah, sure, it might be useful so that they can see what how power is traveling. We did it very similar um, for our solar generators that we used last season but um, this season we've uh, they've added in these calorimetric burners and any food can be put into those burners and depending on at the saturation and how you know much of the hunger bar it feels depends on how much energy it gives so effectively the better the food the better the energy production. I think you've got it all now, have you? That's right. Almost. There we go. There's the recipe. That was two lead on the side, iron at the bottom wood planks there, sign over there on the top, but it's a little quick demon, <laughs> but never mind. Cool. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Um, there's our charge meter. You'll be able to look up the recipe on any eye anyway, so don't worry about it. Um, now if we look over here, we should be able to right click and you see it's taking like 54 seconds to burn this baked potato. 48 seconds left to burn the baked potato on there. And over here, we're generating uh, 16 steam. And it says right now there's zero power coming through, but that's but it's steam what we want. It, we need what's in your hand, which is a laden jar, I believe. The steam turbine. Oh, okay. Steam turbine. That's cool. Yeah, that goes on. Which we'll just place on top. Yep. And hopefully that should start spinning up with the steam underneath. And now it's generating charge. At quite a nice pace, actually. This is way better than the uh, mad um, power gen that we had in the last one because it one it require a lot more space to generate this kind of charge uh, using the solar stuff and uh, takes up yeah. Yeah, but ours looked pretty. Ours looked yeah, it did look funky. They, these didn't exist at the time, to, to be fair on us. So taking some of this lead wire, we can now hook it up to the battery, which is now filling up really fast. Wow, look at that. That's why I was, did some tests. Cool. Um, right. So now I think we should take now. all this good battery power to use here. Yeah? Yes continue on the rest of our making.
Okay, so uh, what's next that you're making? Oh, can we blow up some diamond now? That would be fun. Oh, we can. Would you like to do the honors? Uh, I can do, yeah. So let me grab the TNT and I've got the uh, a lever here ready to go as well. Um, I'm going to have to place these down. There we go. Okay. Probably not a good idea to blow it up in our base. Uh, it's okay. We can contain the blast somewhat because we've, there's, we've got these lakes nearby and things. So, just over here will be fine, I think. So we'll place our good idea. Yeah. Uh, block of diamond there, our TNT next to it. Now this is different. Before you used to have to make a craft packet, place it into a craft packet stamper and stamp the hell out of it to uh, do this task. Uh, things have changed now, so now all we need to do is place a, uh, a lever down uh, next to some TNT, blow it up, I'll move back a bit. Kaboom! And now we get our, our diamond shards that way. So no more crazy infrastructure. It's a little bit explosive, <laughs> but fun. We like explosions. And all to Definitely a lot. Yeah, oh, it's a lot faster and less messing around than the other method. So, yeah, I'm happy with this method. Um, and you get 18 shards, uh, diamond block shards, uh, which uh, I'll pass to you, shall I? Because you're going to need those. There we go. And we'll not be using all of them, so we'll be using them for other stuff later. Absolutely. I've got one plan in mind fairly quickly. Um, as you've seen on other series, raft lamps are the nuts. Pretty cool. So I'm just uh, checking out what Malinka was up to there. Getting in some power, as you can see. Uh, so Luckily, I remembered the first step to this. It's a diamond cutting head. It requires quite a lot of these diamond shards, but uh, yeah. It's fairly expensive in a way, you know, a diamond block to get going with this method, but you know, it's fun, so that's cool. Sure. And I to utilize the next setup for later, we'll be needing one of these. A plug socket. I, uh, from what I understand, um, there aren't that many blocks at the moment that are produced that plug into the socket. However, there is plans to add more things that will plug into the pl that plug socket in factorization over the coming weeks as he makes changes to the mod. Should be exciting. I believe there's only two right now. Yeah, one is... Three, I'm mistaking. Uh, well, what are they? One's a lacerator. One's a robotic arm, and the other is an item shifter. Oh yeah, I forgot about the robotic arm. I haven't seen the item shifter in action. Perhaps we can do that in a later episode. Perhaps. Cool. So yeah, as we said, here's our lacerator, which we'll definitely be needing. Next setup, we will have a slag furnace, because that'll be useful. Okay. Uh, slag furnaces usually use two furnaces and then cobble. Um, this is actually the cheapest way to increase ore generation um, in very, very early game. If you're you know, in a rush to start cooking up ores, this is the quickest way of cooking up ores and getting a bit extra out of it. So you don't double it like you do with those say Tinkerous construct that we did or you know thermal expansion. But this is like what 1.2, 1.4 extra? So it's not I believe it's 1.25. Okay. Cool. So slag furnace made. Then we'll be needing a mixer. And uh, I believe we'll be using the mixer to uh, clean some of our ores, correct? That is correct. So uh, 
at the moment we're doing a three step process for some of our ore generation uh, or ore production here so first we're going to use our diamond cutting head and the lacerator to lacerate them then we'll wash them up and after they're washed and clean we'll cook them up so that's the the steps we're going for well first we need a battery again hence why we have the charge added it to the battery block. Excellent. And another motor being produced. I don't remember the uh, mixer requiring a motor. Another fan. And finally, our mixer. Okay. You know, have you got any insulated coil left over? I do have four. Uh, we needed six. Um, I've got some clay blocks. Because I was thinking the same that we can add over, uh, add on to this build, uh, just to make things a little bit nicer for ourselves. Uh, where have I put that? I think it's in here. Are you thinking a heater? I am thinking a heater, yes. Not a fire, uh, fire heater. They're yummy, but I'm not sure they'll help. <laughs> um, so there's, uh, I've, in the right hand crafting table I put uh, two clay. Um, I can make that quick. And some, is it, is it lead around it? Hopefully we've got enough lead cooked. Uh, ye two lead and... Oh. Yes, lead around the clay. Oh, my clay's gone missing. Have you stolen my clay? I believe your clay is still in the thing. It's gone missing. Yay. That's weird. Oh, I've got it. Oh, you stole it. I was crafting on the... No, I was crafting on the right one. <laughs> oh. Can... Alright, thank you. It's back in the chair. Uh, it's back in the crafting bench. Look at you, Trunky. That's amazing. Um, sorry, so let's get a, a few more of these coils and the furnace heat. I believe we'll be needing two of them. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, well, then I didn't make enough. I got the other four. Okay, then I'll just make uh, one more set and hopefully there's some more lead around. Did you cook up some lead, Malinka? Have you got any spare? Uh, yeah, there should be some in the chest, but I could have used most of it. I only cooked 19. I threw some on the ground for you. Oh, okay. Uh, it's in your inventory. Ah, oh, which means it's in my backpack. I must remember to lock these Always. before I do these episodes, I think. Okay. Like so. Just a small reminder for us, we need more Perdito uh, nodes. Oh yeah, oops, I need to. Add clay there. Oops, there we go. So now I've got 16 insulated coils. And... Where's my set? Furnace heater, I can just shift click the recipe in here. There you go, there's two furnace heaters on the floor. Sorry. <laughs> Jumped in a bit. Thank you. I had planned for it, but I didn't fully put the stuff in for it. That's okay. I think that's all for now. Okay, so let's uh, go set those up. Um, oh, do you know what I will do? I'm going to grab... Have you got a barrel on your person? Got a what? A barrel. I do have a barrel. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to bring in the exact material that we're going to be using to do that. Do you want us to sleep? I can do that. Yeah, I was going to check the farms. Thanks. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Okay, sorry. Let's 
come back through. Yes, uh, so the reason why we've done this whole setup is Cobalt and Ardite cannot be doubled or tripled in any other way than using factorization, from what I understand. Correct. So that's the reason for this setup. So in other ways, we're actually just too lazy to mine in the nether. Well, does that... That was, is correct. It's about not being wasteful as well, right? <laughs> well, is it still true that if you go deep enough into factorization, you can actually triple your output? Yes, indeed. Um, we may add to that later, um, but the last step, the crystallizer, um, takes like 15 minutes per cycle and I believe you can only do like four ores at a time you know, it's like four ores per 15 minutes it's pretty slow yeah we'll use it for gold later on or so oh. Okay. Forgot something very important. That's okay. Have stuff to put our stuff in. Oh yes. Um there's our socket down. Um, yeah, ne is that next to the battery so that it should work? And the lacerator looks mean. <laughs> it does. And while it's running if you're in front of it it does lacerate you, so be careful of that. Um, so there's two ways of using this lacerator. One is I can just place a block here like so and it will grind up very slowly but it will work um, and eventually it will grind it and place it in the chest. Um, that takes a very long time. <laughs> everything it has to heat up first. Yeah, everything about factorization is a little slower than usual, but it's cool. But it's Which you can slow. check. You can check it with the uh, uh, special tool. Oh yeah, the charge. It's a 22 charge at 100% speed. So it's, it's it's sped up. It just takes a while done this way. There's a uh, This is a slow way of doing it anyway. We're about to show the quick way. There we go. And it's gone, apparently. That's interesting. Where's it gone? Well, let's try doing it this way then, I guess. So the other way of doing it um, is by placing a barrel in front, place the ore in the barrel, and it can macerate the stuff in the barrel. It won't actually macerate the barrel itself, which is kind of cool. But why did we lose that last lot of stuff? I don't know. Well, either way, it's working now. We've got some dirty cobalt gravel coming through the machine. Nice. Um, so I believe your next step is to uh, wash said dirty gravel. And for that, we'll need a heater. Um, I think I gave. I believe. To you. Yeah. I know the slag no, we don't furnace. need a heater for that. Yeah, the slag furnace requires it. So uh, just bear in mind that you're going to want to put um, the slag furnace next to the battery or power over to it. Look how much quicker it is um, in a barrel. So much better. Yeah, uh, oddly enough, it is quicker. Cool. So we've but I think that's because it speeds up and it stays sped up and you don't have to wait for it to speed up again after you place another one. Aye. So yeah, with the, inside the mixer we've got some water cans. Uh, we've put a lot in there just so that we don't have to keep messing around with it. And uh, I'm just going to grab some of this dirty cobalt gravel that we've got. I'll take half of it for the moment. And if I place it in here, then it will start washing it. And in just a moment, because it doesn't take long at all, we get some clean cobalt gravel, and we've got sludge. And sludge is quite good, because I think you can cook it or craft it 
in some way to turn it into clay? Yeah, you cook it in a furnace. Cool. And yeah, just gives us a, a way of accessing clay somehow, which is nice. Um, now, the f we've got a normal furnace here and a slag furnace, but we can actually power those up if, when you get the cable over to the heater. So instead of... Uh, this. Yeah, go on. Go for it. Ah, I was going to say, this does dual purpose. A, you need the heater for the slag furnace to power that, but it also can dual purpose as using uh, heating up a furnace so you don't have to use coal or charcoal. Yep, yeah, I think in a slag furnace you can use coal as well, but this is just far less wasteful, to be honest. It's just much better using these furnace heaters, especially as we've already got power being made. It's, we might as well use it. And we can see this holding charge in there. Everything's going smoothly, and I believe we just placed the clean cobalt gravel in the slag furnace, correct? Correct. And that will cook up. And I don't know... If, I think you just get double output here um, at times, not always, but sometimes you'll get double output of reduced cobalt chunks. Like 1.25. So? It first doubles it by lacerating it, and then you get another 1.25 for the slag furnace, and then if you had the crystallizer, it gives you another 1.10, I believe, added on to it, so you could potentially triple your output. Cool. So these reduced, uh, th that is the idea of it, yep, and uh, putting the last step is to cook the cobalt chunks in the furnace and we'll be able to automate all of this by you know adding pipes and stuff into the whole thing which we may do in a moment off camera and then just show it all finished but you can see that's all working now and we've got cobalt production and a far increased rate and you can do the same thing with ardite which is the other ore that you get from the never from Tinkerous Construct um, and pretty much any ore works actually so Pretty tasty. Is there anything uh, Good. else you want to show now, or shall we show the rest after we've done all the piping? Probably after all we've done the piping. Okay, cool. Well, we'll be right back then after we've uh, piped all this up. Hello, it's a bit of a mess, but we have got some wiring going on. Uh, we've used um, the pipes from, is it Open Blocks? Extra utilities. Oh, extra utilities. Um, so let's have a take a look at those. Uh, I think they're just called pipe. If I look it up here, we should be able to find these pipes up here. So if transfer pipe. Yep, transfer pipes. There's a filter pipe in here, which I'll show in more detail in a minute. This is how you make that. And have you got any nodes going on or not? I have not yet. Okay. So in the filter pipe is down here and you've got rather like uh, the Buildcraft diamond pipes, you can s say what material goes what and where. But um, yeah, basically they'll grab an, an item off of uh, an inventory, it's kind of hard to, to really show but um, I'll take this dirty gravel here, place it in the mixer which is where our system starts at the moment. Once it cleans up it will go into the inventory under the bottom here on the transfer node which we'll see in just a moment and it will go into its buffer and what it will start doing is it will start looking for valid inventories nearby to place it in and uh, once it's found a valid inventory um, and usually the nearest one in which case the slag furnace it goes and starts cooking it and the slag furnace is set up as well so that uh, well the sludge at the moment is clogging the system but once we've got past that side of it should be working. Which is not at the moment as it happens. Demon. The um, slag furnace, uh, uh, where's it transferring its stuff to? 
back to the mixer again? It's not going in the mixer. Oh, it's still stuck searching for in inventories. So... Oh, probably because I haven't set it up yet. Oh, okay. Sh shouldn't it not find the one at the back? Maybe I've uh, wrenched that wrong down there. Which is possible. Let me get rid of that. Maybe I'll be able to t see. There, it'll probably find it now. Uh, well, Sludge managed to get through again. It's almost like the sludge keeps clogging it up. Yeah, we'll need to reset sludge in a filter. Which I'll make one now. Yeah, the pot item should be coming out of um, this node here. Coming down this pipe towards us. But <clears throat> I think what's happening is that this pipe here trying to give it another direction and it's confusing it probably uh, regardless I think we'll sort this off camera you get the idea we're gonna be transferring our items around and when we've got it sorted then it will be it'll be great but uh, the basic premise even if you transfer them manually from spot to spot you'll see that the output of ingots from our 39 original output will end up with about a stack and a half so uh, we'll be back um, you know what this turned quite a long episode so actually I'm going to uh, track it down here uh, next episode you'll see us having this fully cleaned up and we're going to use cobalt to make some f fancy new tools so uh, yeah for, for now I think it's a good time to finish up if you've enjoyed the episode please leave a subscribe comment like as per usual and um, I don't know if Malinka's still here, but before we wrap up... I'm still hanging around. Uh, you've added a sawmill, an energetic infuser which is embedded in the floor, a fluid transposer, a magma crucible, an induction smelter, cool, and a bunch of uh, powered uh, furnace here and pulverizer. So all our tools are coming through. Nice. So that's good. Um, Everything going to the chest through uh, item ducts. I'm loving those uh, things. Yeah, and uh, the energetic infuser and the sawmill, which we've not used before, will come back in uh, maybe next episode as well and show what we can do with those. Um, so, yeah, so Malink has done that in the background. We've made some factorization headway to triple our ores. Well, well more than double, not quite triple our ores for Ardite and Cobalt so I think now's a good time we'll finish up and say goodbye so from Demon Reaper, Fireweaver and Malinka bye goodbye